Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Big Bike BMX. I'm 80s BMX Craig, and today we are gonna do some tech tip talking. That's right, we're gonna be looking at hydraulic disc brakes and how to change out specifically the rotor and the brake pads. So one of the things I won't be talking about today is how to bleed the system and to get new hydraulic fluid into your bike brake system, but we'll do that on another uh, Tech Talk. Today, it's just rotors and pads. So let me tell you a little bit about what was going on um, right here on my SE Fat Quad. Um, in the back of my bike, in the rear, I was having like a lot of crunchy sounds whenever I'd apply my brakes, um, my rear brake, and uh, it just wasn't sounding right. So one of the f first things that I did was um, I took the pads out and basically um, inspected them looked at the rotor, inspected that to make sure I didn't have a warped rotor or I didn't have any contaminants on the pads. Both of those things I didn't find. Um, and yet again, I don't have like a professional mechanic, bike mechanic eye, so I just kind of checked things out and looked at it. Um, kept readjusting and readjusting the, uh, the calipers. And we're gonna get all into that like really soon. So I just wanna let you know what I was finding um, and then what I did at the end was I actually ended up buying a new rotor and new pads and did a swap out. So I want to really want to get, show you guys how to swap out your rotor and brake pads if that's the point you get to. But um, let's go over things. Let's take a look at the bike. And uh, I want to go step by step and show you guys um, exactly what I did and uh, see what was the result of all that labor and, and uh, inspection and work through the uh, hydraulic brake rotor and pad setup. Okay, so... Without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the bike and get to uh, swapping these parts out. We'll see you in a second. All right, so here we are taking a look at the rear hydraulic braking system. We'll go ahead and start with just kind of going over some of the simple and basics of the hydraulic braking system. Um, that's after the brake lever. We all know what the brake lever is. So the um, hydraulic line right here where the hydraulic fluid is pumped into um, the caliper section, which is mounted right here on the rear of the bike. As you see, the brake cable lands in here. And inside there we have um, if I can point to this correctly, uh, where your brake pads and the actual piston um, calipers are inside here. And we'll go over that in a, section, in a second. Um, we have the mounting bracket um, here and where the uh, calipers mount to on that. That's gonna be important later. And as we look around the back here, you'll notice I have uh, the rotor right here. It's that round disc, okay? So a lot of you folks already know this. You already know what all the parts and pieces are. You're just like, get to the meat and potatoes, Craig. Well, I will, but I just want to go over this in case there's a lot of, you know, some people out there that don't really know um, all the ins and outs and what the parts are called. Um, so I'm just going over that for general purposes. Um, and like I said, as you notice, I've already swapped out my rotor and my brake pads um, on the rear where I was having issues and, uh, Let's go ahead and take a look at the um, stock rotor here in a second, and just to show you what's going on with that. Okay, now that we've gone over the nomenclature of all the parts or the basic parts of the hydraulic brake system, let's get into the inspection of our hydraulic brake uh, parts that we just went over while they're on the bike. We wanna do that before we start taking things apart because really we can see what's going on with our braking system as it sits on the bike. If you start taking things apart, you may not find the root cause, or if you're having issues with your braking system, like me with the crunching sound, um, it's kind of hard to tell after you've taken it apart, um, in certain cases, if there was a problem that you could visually see and, and understand what the root cause of your issue was. So let's go ahead and take a visual inspection uh, while it's on the bike, and let's see what we come up with. So here we are, we're ready to do an inspection on our braking system, our hydraulic brake rotor, and our brake caliper and pad set. We've already ridden the bike. We noticed, or I've noticed that there's issues making some crunching sounds, making some 
sounds that just don't sound normal to me. So one of the things I'm gonna do right out of the gate um, is I'm gonna check the alignment here of my rotor and my calipers. So as I look down the center of my bike here, and it's hard to tell, but you do wanna check the alignment here. Go ahead and just look in there. Make sure that you're not uh, getting any rubbing on your pads and your rotor. Go ahead and spin your, spin your uh, rotor and make sure that the rotor that you have doesn't have any of those warps we were talking about. If every, everything looks copacetic, um, what I'm gonna suggest at that point is to um, just realign your calipers right here. So sometimes the calipers could be off um, because your rotor may be slightly askew left or right. So in any event, what you wanna do is you want to loosen the mounting bolts on your calipers, which are right here and right here. You'll wanna loosen those up to where this is actually loose, where you can move it around, okay? After you do that, you'll wanna go up and squeeze your brake lever. And while holding that brake lever, come back here and tighten those two bolts we were talking about without letting go of your brake lever. So what that does is, as this is loose and the pistons um, push your brake pads onto your rotor, it actually aligns your caliper body. And when you tighten these bolts, um, while the, the calipers um, and pistons are pushing on that rotor, as you tighten these, that'll align your caliper setup to your rotor. So once, they, once these are tight, you can go ahead and loosen, or excuse me, let go of your brake, calip your brake lever, and then essentially this will already be dialed in and set. Um, at that point, I would go out and ride, or you know, check rotation on here, check your alignment, and if you're not having any issues after that, you're pretty much set. So let's take a look at some other things here. Um, we'll do a, an actual rotor inspection and uh, see what we can find out with that. Okay, guys, if you've gotten to the point where you've done a visual inspection um, without tearing anything off from your bike, things are still not going great. You realigned your caliper's uh, body, as I just talked about, and you're still having issues. Maybe it's time to do a little bit further digging on this and uh, start taking things apart inspecting a rotor, maybe changing your brake pads, um, and just really going through the whole setup to see if you have any other underlying issues. Let's do a little bit of that right now and see what we can find. Okay, we're looking at the front uh, wheel right now just because I get a little bit better view of the rotor and how it's mounted. So if you're gonna end up taking the rotor off your bike, you are going to have to remove your wheel set, okay? So here at the front, uh, you just remove um, your axle bolts and uh, take your front wheel off to where you can get to these mounting screws which mount your rotor onto your hub, okay? You can't do it any other way. Even if you can get the screws out cleverly, you still have to be able to slide the rotor off, which means you gotta take those off. All right, so you got the rotor off. You took the wheel set uh, off the bike, you remove the rotor by removing these six mounting screws to the hub, and now you have the rotor off. And really, it's just a chance to take a closer look at your rotor. Uh, look at it under light, move it around, see if you've got any issues, some deep pitting or deep grooves in your rotor. Check both sides because you have two pads that make contact with both sides, so why not check both sides? Um, be careful if you're handling, handling this uh, barehanded. I try not to touch the um, the section where the pads actually make contact with the rotor. I don't really want to get any oils or uh, things from my hand on there, um, just because I, I don't want to contaminate it. But it's a good it's a good time to check this uh, out. And I don't really like to handle the outside either because it's kind of sharp. So if you do, you know, make sure you have some protection on your hands. Wear some gloves, but. Uh, yeah, it's a good time to check things out. You may not be able to see like warping on here. I like to spin this while it's on the wheel and uh, see if I notice any warping while it's spinning. Um, when you're holding it just like this, it's 
it's not that easy unless you have some really apparent warping. But uh, yeah, check out the rotor. Um, leave me a comment below if you guys see something that I'm not seeing. I don't see any really huge ish issues. Uh, this was the rear rotor on my fat quad. Um, so yeah, um, not seeing any glaring issues right here. So I'm actually going to keep this rotor um, as a backup and uh, probably need to take a look at the, uh, the disc brake pads now. So let's go check those out. Okay, so we're going to remove the disc pads from the rear caliper or front caliper. This is the same, basically the same um, setup in the rear as it is in the front. So as your pads sit in here, okay, and they are basically making their way, here's the top of the, uh, the mount for your pads and your actual pad set is down in there. You can see it right there. You'll want to take this caliper body off. Now I know we talked about how to line these and, and set those so they're aligned with your rotor, but let's assume that you're past that point and you're going to take these off um, so that you can change your pads out. The only way to do that is to remove this bolt and this mounting bolt and take your caliper off its mount. Once you do that, um, you're going to need a small Allen key or hex key and right here on the caliper body itself, this bolt right here, I'll point to it right there, that bolt actually goes through the bracket that holds your pads. So what you're gonna wanna do is insert your Allen key, loosen this guy up, and once that's loose, you can push your pads and the bracket down through here and remove your pads out of the bottom of the, uh, of the calipers. So again, this has to be off to remove the pad set. And let's show you what those look like once they're removed. All right, once the brake pads are removed from the caliper, here's what they look like. Here's how they come out. They have that bracket in there that holds the pads. And on the outside, you can see the pads right there. These are the pads themselves. Let's go ahead and take a look at those and check out the pads. So these just pop out of that bracket as so. I'll move the bracket aside. There's the bracket. And you can see the pads right here. Now I'm gonna take one of the pads and we can kind of check it out. I'm gonna go out into the sunlight here so we can kind of check out the pad itself. Now, I don't know if it's because of the composite or whatever, but you can see almost like some metallic flaking in there. Um, the pad itself um, doesn't look too bad, even though there's a lot of grooving in there. I'm assuming that's how the pad um, burned itself into the rotor and uh, basically like imprinting itself, the rotor imprinting itself on the brake pad, which is, which is essentially what you want. Um, but I don't know if these are looking great or if they're looking messed up. So because I was having issues with them, I decided to swap them out. If you guys notice anything off from these or like that pitting in there um, or the flaking that's going on, hit me in the comments below and let me know if this is normal or not so normal. Okay, so once you have your replacement pads, and these are the old ones, these aren't the replacements, I just wanna show you guys. Once you have the replacement pads, and I try not to touch, again, just like the rotor, I try not to touch the pads um, with my bare fingers because I don't wanna get any oils on a new pad, but um, apparently there's like a glazing on a new pad set anyways, like a protective coating. So we'll talk about what we have to do with that in a minute. But uh, I, this is the way I handle it. I, I try not to touch the actual face of the padding. So you take that pad and you get it onto the bracket just by placing it on there. And you'll notice, if I could do this right, you'll notice that there are these, and I'll do one pad on, one pad off. There's these like forks on the frame and those forks fit around the pad itself. So once you get both of those on there, you're ready to go and reinstall it. All right, so you got your brake, your new brake pads already set up, and now you're gonna push, put them back into your caliper housing 
And remember when we talked about getting the brake pads out, how you, once you removed um, this screw right here, which holds your brake pad um, set in there, you're gonna, when you go to reinstall these, you're gonna just go back in reverse. You're gonna push that, um, the two brake pads in the frame back up through the bottom to where they reach the top and you're gonna reinstall that, um, that screw right through there, uh, through this section here to hold that pad set in there. Make sure that the screw goes through the pad set, the frame and the other pad set and threads itself through the other end. So once that's done, you're set, you're good to go. You got everything back together. Remember these were off, this uh, caliper was off the uh, mounting um, platform. So you're gonna be retightening these down. But before you do that, we're gonna do like we talked about earlier. Um, we're gonna start by just threading these on by hand, not very tight. Um, we need to realign the calipers back onto the rotor. So basically we're gonna do what we talked about earlier. We're gonna, we're gonna come up here. We're gonna squeeze our rear brake lever, which is essentially going to push in the pistons and the brake pads against the rotor. And without letting go of that rear brake lever, we are going to tighten down the mounting bolts right here. And once the mounting bolts are nice and tight and you haven't let go of that brake lever yet, um, once these are nice and tight, then you can let go. And this should essentially be um, lined up perfectly with that rotor when you let go. All right, now that you have everything back together, you got your new rotor on, you've got your new brake pads installed and your brake caliper has been aligned like we talked about and you're ready to go. You've given it a spin or two, you're checking your alignment, things sound great. The next thing we need to do is take it for a test ride. All right, just to clarify something, you guys, when I say let's take it for a test ride, we are also going to be doing something called bedding in the brakes. So now that you've got a new pad set and rotor, um, and even if you just replace the pads and not the rotor, you're going to want to bed in your brakes. You're going to want to your brake pads. You're gonna to wanna to burn those pads in so they imprint on the rotor properly and correctly. And we're gonna go over a little bit about that um, right now. So what I'm gonna show you guys is bedding in the brakes, okay? So when you're out there doing your, your bed in, your burn in of your pads and rotor, you don't want to come to a halting skid stop, okay? So what's gonna happen with that is your pad, if you were to do that, your pads and your rotor would clamp down so hard that it would leave a huge amount of brake material on one section of the rotor. And what's gonna happen with that or what could happen with that is afterwards, your rotor, every time it passes by the pads is gonna make that warpy sound or some type of sound that's not gonna, it's just not gonna sound right. It's not gonna perform as good as it possibly could because you have that section of brake pad all built up on there or maybe even issues with the rotor and, and slamming it right out of the gate. So what you wanna do is what we call burn in the brake pads. So you wanna get up to speed, you wanna ride your bike, compress your brake lever, probably about 30 to 50% to where you're slowing almost to a stop. And once you almost stop, you wanna let go of the pad, ramp back up to speed again and do it over and over. It's burning in the brake pad, imprinting on the rotor, um, do this, you know, several, several times until you start to feel your brake set becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. What that's also going to do is it's going to wear that glaze off your brand new, um, your brand new pads. And so you want to get past that glaze. Um, some people recommend sanding that glaze off before you ride. Um, I'm not too sure about that. Um, leave me a comment below if you've ever done that and it's worked for you. I'd love to know, but I would just suggest putting your new pads on and riding them um, and, and bedding those in and burning those brake pads in um, by using your rotor and pads and your brake lever. So let's get on the bike. I'll show you a few things of what I'm talking about and how to get them burnt in and uh, we'll go from there. All right guys, here we are. We're outside. We're gonna start doing what's called bedding the brakes. And so what you wanna do, and sorry if there's a lot of wind, you wanna get up to speed, okay? And when you Squeeze your brake lever, pull it in about halfway until you come to a stop, or you're almost a stop, I should say. Let go, 
and then get back up to speed. So once you're back up to speed, squeeze it again, let it go. And you're gonna to wanna to do this several times over and over again. As you feel your brakes getting stronger, you won't have to squeeze this as much and you know that your brakes are getting bedded in. So here it is again, almost to a slow. And then do it again. Do not skid at this point, like I said, I don't recommend it. Don't be super heavy, heavy right out of the gate on these. Just get up to speed. Squeeze until almost a stop. Burn your brake pads in. And after a while, you're gonna feel the difference. You're gonna feel those brakes getting stronger and you should be good to go. All right, guys, there you have it. There's my tech tip on um, uh, troubleshooting your hydraulic brakes and especially the rotors and pads. Um, as always, make sure you check the specs on the bike that you're trying to fix or trying to troubleshoot and replace and repair parts with. Um, your rotor sizes may vary from front to back. On the fat quad, it's a 160 millimeter rotor in the back and on the front, it's 180 millimeter. So you'll definitely wanna know your rotor sizes and get your specs right. Um, and do the same with the brake pads. Make sure they're rated for your brake system. Make sure they fit. Um, otherwise, you're gonna be making several trips to the bike shop or having Amazon waiting on those deliveries to get the right parts for you. So do your research and, uh, and just get everything dialed in before you start tearing things apart and replacing. But you guys already know that. You guys are like all on top of this and I'm just you know, telling you something you already know. But uh, leave me a comment below. Let me know if there's any other special pro tips that you might have that can help me out and everyone else um, when they're doing their brake pad. Um, inspection and replacement and rotor replacement. So again, thanks everyone for showing up. I'm 80s BMX Craig. I hope you guys had a good time hanging out with me. I sure had fun doing this with you guys and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.